Hello everyone, my name is Xiaoqing Wan. I'm a PhD candidate at the University of Central Florida, and today I'm going to show you how to do emotion detection in Python. First, we're going to take a look at the agenda. We're going to understand how emotion detection is different from sentiment analysis. Then we will understand why emotion detection is useful. Then I will compare lexicon-based methods with deep learning methods and understand their pros and cons. And finally, we will end with a Python notebook walkthrough using the package nrc-lex, which is a lexicon-based method. Moving on to the first question, how is emotion detection different from sentiment analysis? To give you some background, I was at the Society for Affective Science earlier this year. It is a conference where academic researchers who study emotions get together and share their latest findings. At this conference, Researchers repeatedly brought up a popular and revered framework called the circumplex model, which is developed by Posner. Posner plots out emotions on a 2D plane. On the x-axis, we have how pleasant an emotion is, and on the y-axis, we have the activation level of an emotion. For instance, feeling excited is highly activated and pleasant, and feeling relaxed is pleasant but deactivated. Sentiment analysis in data science is usually concerned with the x-axis only. For instance, we want to understand from negative 100 to positive 100 how pleasant is the user's message. But when we do emotion detection, we're going to look at the entire ring. We will especially focus on the six basic emotions that are found to be universal across different cultures. And there are sadness, disgust, anger, fear, surprise, and happiness. The next topic is why is emotion detection useful? If you're an academic researcher, you may want to know how the public perceives a new public health issue. For example, what is the public sentiment towards COVID vaccines? And if you're doing corporate research, you may want to know how people feel about your products. It would be nice to quantify and classify user utterances in terms of emotion. For instance, I love these pillows conveys a sense of joy, and your website sucks conveys a sense of anger and disgust. Notice how emotions can be expressed by punctuation marks and emojis and distress words like sucks. All of these features are good predictors when you're building an emotion detection model. Another reason for doing emotion detection is you want to identify customer complaints. For example, someone said the chair is a pain to assemble. It does not come with holes already drilled. Very frustrated. This shouldn't happen. And this message conveys a sense of anger and surprise. This kind of constructive feedback is important to identify because it's going to help you improve your product. And finally, another reason for doing emotion detection is you want to identify sales leads. For instance, someone said, good morning, can I get some advice for my investment account? This message conveys a sense of joy and trust, and these emotions can help you identify clients who are interested in signing up for more services. Next, we're going to compare different methods that are used to detect emotions in text. On the left, lexicon-based methods are rule-based. For instance, if you have the input, my teacher encouraged me, the algorithm is going to pick up keywords from the sentence, in this case, encourage, and it's going to output emotions associated with the keyword, which are joy and trust. For this to work, linguistic researchers have used crowdsourcing to label tens of thousands of keywords with emotions. Deep learning, on the other hand, include methods such as long short-term memory and BERT, which is short for bidirectional encoder representations from transformers and universal sentence encoder. I encourage you to read the recently published survey papers to understand more about the deep learning methods. And let's take a look at the major pros and cons of each method. The lexicon based methods are easy to understand. We can also use it to detect multi labeled mixed emotions. For example, a mother can be both happy and sad about their child going to college, leaving their home. In similar ways, a human-generated sentence can convey multiple, sometimes contradicting emotions, 
and this can be detected by lexicon-based methods. We can also use this method to detect more than 10 emotions, such as anger, sadness, joy, trust, surprise, etc. Another major advantage is that you don't need to provide label training data to start using this method. And we can use off-the-shelf packages to quickly implement emotion detection. Life is also full of trade-offs. Lexicon-based methods cannot detect the negations. It doesn't know that I don't like it is the opposite of I like it. And it cannot recognize new words. For instance, COVID-19 is a new word created in 2019. The algorithm is not going to be able to understand this word unless you update the dictionary supporting the package. Next, we will shift gear to look at deep learning methods. The pros and cons are kind of the opposite compared to lexicon-based methods. Deep learning methods can sometimes deliver higher accuracy compared to lexicon-based methods. And it is slightly better at detecting negation, although many algorithms still struggle with it. It can also do a better job at reading context and understanding sarcasm. The cons are, number one, it is harder to learn and understand and implement deep learning methods. Deep learning methods usually does not output multi-labeled mixed emotions, although there are recent publication that is capable of doing this. But even then, they usually detect no more than three different emotions, so it's a very restricted range of emotions. We also need to feed the models label training data so you'll need to spend some time doing manual labeling to provide the ground truth. And finally, we're going to take a look at the Python notebook walkthrough using the package NRC-LEX. NRC stands for National Research Canada. They are the researchers who built the corpus that supports this library. To install the packages, simply go to your terminal and type in pip install NRC-LEX. The other two libraries used in this tutorial is NumPy and Pandas. Let's say we have a natural language sentence that is your website is horrible. We're going to feed it to NRC Lex and then make this thing an object called emotion. Then we invoke the methods from NRC Lex. The first one is words. It's going to break down the original sentence into a subcomponent list of words. And then Affect Dictionary is going to tell us that out of these four words, the algorithm recognized the word horrible, and horrible is associated with these emotions. Now, let's look at a longer example. We have this post that I found on LinkedIn. It goes, I'm humbled and honored to be surrounded by colleagues who challenge, support, and encourage me at each stage, etc., etc. This time we see that multiple words are detected by NRC-LEX. For example, humbled is both positive and sad at the same time. Challenge invokes the sense of anger, fear, and it's negative. In this case, it's a false positive because the author used the word challenge in a good way. Overall, we can use the method raw emotion score to summarize that the sentence contained four words that are positive, one word that is sad, one word that is angry, etc. Next, the method top emotions is going to return the dominant emotion. For the sentence that we just saw above, the top emotion is positive, and this is actually very sensible. A human can tell you that the paragraph that we just read is indeed expressing positive sentiments. And point four comes from dividing four out of the 10 counts of emotions that we have detected. And moving on, Affect frequency is going to standardize the raw emotion scores. Here we see that 40% of the emotion detected was positive, and 10% was sadness. Anticipation was not detected, so it gets a score of zero. And now let's see how to do what we just did to a data frame. I have a data frame that has two columns one being message ID, and the other one is the actual text. For instance, we have your website is very easy to use, and the opposite, your website is not good, and is this refundable, so on and so forth. And before you use NRC Lex to detect emotions in text, make sure you process and clean the data. Before you use NRC Lex to detect emotions in text, make sure you process and clean the data. For example, 
you want to lemmatize the words so that past tense becomes present tense and third person usage becomes first person. I am skipping data cleaning here and I will show you the results directly. Here I am creating a new column called emotion. And for each text, we're going to get the affect frequency. Lambda here is going to help us repeat this process for every single text. And finally, in the next section, we will turn this dictionary into columns up here. We have these emotion vectors and we can use them as predictors when we build an emotion model. Finally, I will remind you some of the limitations the package has. The first one being that NRC Lex can't handle negations. That's why for the sentence, your website is not good, good is being interpreted as positive and joyful. NRC Lex also cannot recognize words that it doesn't know. So someone needs to be fired returns no emotion whatsoever because the word fired is not in the corpus. And that is another reason why we need to lemmatize the words. For example, fired with a D may not be in the corpus, but the word fire could potentially be there. So you want to strip away these extra grammarly things at the end. I'm also attaching some references that help me learn how to use this package. If you like this video, please hit the like button. It really helps me understand if I should make more of these videos. That is all we have today. I will see you next time.